for example, the housing market right now, even though the price is high, there's still people buying it. Mm-hmm. Listen, my friend, my friend who's trying to buy a cabin in Tennessee literally lost the bid, even though he overbid by 50K, more than 10% he overbid. Nah, he, he underbid there. Uh, you ha- they have houses, <laughs> there's houses here where I, I've heard of people who, who overbid by $500,000 and lost yeah. the bid. He bid 10% over, like, geez, come on, bro. But I get, but again, it, it's just it is different, such, right? Like we, yeah. we, we grew up in a market where like you always underbid, right? Like, you're, Correct, you're, yeah. like you're always trying to get a good deal. Um, and like what, what the seller has is, is what the seller put the price up is always like his high end, right? Correct. Yeah. Whereas now they put the price up, it's their high end and they're still getting overbid. Hey there, welcome to the Gluten-Free Organic Thoughts Podcast, where you are encouraged to express your natural thoughts and views through casual, meaningful conversations that hopefully can lead to learning and understanding new perspectives. To find out more info, visit www.gfothoughts.com. Now, here are your hosts, Michael Wong and Robert Din. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another great episode of Gluten Free Organic Thought Podcast. My name is Michael Wong and always with me, Robert Dare. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Today we have a great episode for you today. Yeah. It's, it's about if we're going to be able to afford anything in a few yeah. years. Like everything's just getting so well, expensive. Especially, especially nowadays, we see you know, prices stacking up here left and right with <laughs> food, gas, you know, yeah. even houses right now. You know, it's crazy, especially yeah. the last two years. Exactly. And especially, yeah, especially during this pandemic. It's been crazy. Yeah. You would think that during the pandemic, the house price would stay flat, but no, yeah, it's actually increased a lot more. You would think, yeah. It's in a reset where like nobody's working and all that stuff, but yeah, yeah, it's not how it is. All right. Before we get started, so Robert, what are you drinking today? I am drinking the same thing as last week or last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm drinking this Scotto Family Cellars. Wine. Man, you're, you're really babying that bottle, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking one one glass an episode, and then we'll see how long we can Since last. Since when it. you restricted yourself to one glass? Come on. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because we have shorter episodes now, so it's, it's I drink less during throughout the episode. It's not shorter episodes; it's more efficient episodes. Okay? <laughs> more efficient episodes, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, name, we'll call it that. All right. What so are you I'm drinking? Drink- I'm drinking a ginger tea, uh, straight up. It's just ginger, nice and warm, you know, uh, just to, it's, it's good for digestion in a sense. Is that your honey uh, ginger stuff? No, it's just a typical flat ginger tea. Oh, I, I want, I want to try this brand ginger. out. It was like kind of like powdered ginger. So just, all you gotta do is mix it with hot water and that's pretty much really it. It's very strong tasting ginger. Oh, for those who like ginger, this is something you want to try it out. You can mm. get this at the Asian market. So. Mm, interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's very soothing. Cool. I like the little spiciness taste of it afterwards. So, but yeah, that's ginger right. for you. So, the question we're trying to answer today is that will an average person can afford a house in the next ten to twenty years? I think ten to twenty years is kind of a little bit big. We're talking about maybe the next twenty years. How about that? In the next mm-hmm. twenty years. So, let's throw some facts out there. So we know that for sure that housing prices has gone up the last five years easily, right? Mm-hmm. And we noticed that as well, at least personally in Florida alone, I noticed that, especially in Orlando, the housing market has just skyrocketed because one, due to low inventory, two, due to low cost of uh, raw materials, you know, like wood, because wood, wood was one of the biggest shortage commodity from COVID. Mm-hmm. La- la- even, even before COVID, there was, there was even a shortage already. Mm-hmm. So, and then third is the labor. The labor cost went up too. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah. You know, we have a in San Francisco. It's uh, a little different. Yeah. In the last couple last couple of years, uh, the housing market in the city has gone down or stayed the same. Yeah. But if you go anywhere outside the city, it's skyrocketed. So everyone outside the city, everyone's moving oh, wow. to the suburbs. Uh, because of COVID, everyone can work from home. So then yeah. they're all moving to the suburbs. It's cheaper and there's more space, and people are getting out of the city. Uh, but in the city, it's basically flat. Um, and I think more recently, it's got, starting to go back up again. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But, let me, but let me ask you this, though. I, I mean, even 
South Florida has always been an issue, okay? South Florida inventory has always been low and the price has just been jacked up. Even the last, but, but however, though, the only, one of the biggest caveat people tend to forget is that there are a lot of foreign investment coming to the United States that's taken up all those houses and buying them in cash where an average American don't have that kind of cash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just throw, just, just throwing a number out there. The average American in 2019 made about 50K a year, if even. That's like that's the medium medium amount. It's 2019? not the average. Yeah, the, that's the medium. Yes, mm -hmm. You know, and that's not much. And an average house, I mean, I mean, and and it depends obviously depending on the region, the, your average cost of your housing, you know, can vary, right? And keep this in mind: our living cost of living in the United States, it's not cheap at all. It's true. Yeah, and it's like the salaries haven't caught up with how much like they don't go up as much as like how much everything else increases no, um i was looking at i was looking at uh average income um in the last since like the 80s right and it yep. like average income in the 80s was like 50 something thousand and then like up to now where they have something like 60 70 thousand uh was the high and it's, it dropped last year right um yep. and then so 50, 50 to 70, even 50 to 70 is like a, what is it? 40% increase. Yeah. Whereas like the average housing prices, it went from, I think in the eighties, I saw like average sale price of houses was like, uh, I mean, if you look at, if, even if you, if you look at this chart here, right. That I just sent you like, a, like the historical medium house price. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the medium price alone. And especially last, it's just as, as of May this year, it's a little bit over 350, 300, 320K easily. Yeah. That's a medium price. But in the 80s, it was like 100,000. It was less, oh, than, less than 100,000, right? It yeah. So in, in, the, yeah, in the 80s, it was between the 81 to 89. It was under just like actually yeah, around 70,000 to above a 110, the 10 year gap. So it was, yeah, it's, it, was, it was less than, yeah, it was less than 100,000, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just that hundred thousand to like three hundred thousand is three X, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then our income has increased forty percent. So it's not that we're making more money and buying more houses. No, we're not. It's just that's just not how it's working. Nope. It's foreign investors coming in. It's also the people who are rich have found out, have figured out that like you can buy houses and rent them out and have passive income, right? Correct. People who yeah. are just getting rich are like, oh, we got to do this. So they'll yeah. buy multiple houses and then rent them out. And then people who are ultra rich, they're also doing the same thing. They have, just have bigger budgets. They're buying more and more of them, more and more they're houses. They buy apartment, condos, their houses, you know? Yeah. So yeah. then it's like the, the rich people are buying up all of the houses and the, the poor people, the people who are medium income or like middle class, they're not they're not making as much to be able to buy because the prices are just skyrocketing. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a funny thing to see this because, you know, we just had the housing market, you know, a boom, you know, back in 2008, 2009, right? Where there was a lot of inventory out there, but the house price was going up because there was so much, so much demand. It was very easy to get a mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, boom, a lot of inventory, but no buyers, mm -hmm. you know? And so therefore the price plummet right and now we're in a situation where no inventory a lot of buyer a lot of foreign investment but not a lot of people who are locally like who want to afford that they can't afford it like listen in florida alone the average cost right now of a house is two ninety seven thousand dollars. that's ridiculous yeah it's also yeah. interesting because like during the pandemic right the people who lost their jobs were the lowest income people correct so people who are high income they have all this cash available and so houses start going on the market and then they just start buying them right like yeah so like that's why in like inventory is is still low because yeah the people are still buying the people who are buying are, are are still buying the people who are not buying uh who were never buying before are the ones that are losing their jobs and like don't have don't have yeah money and and, and listen look take a look at this money supply i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, the monthly supply of houses in the united states okay and so this is like a not, this is uh, through uh, Fred, which is the you know federal um, Federal Reserve uh, website, uh, and so it shows the volume 
of the, of the supply throughout 1965 all the way to 2021. If you look at the supply, in fact, before the recession, it was so high. And look at look where we are right now in 2021. You know, this yeah. is not, and this is this. The thing is that because it's cost so much to build a house now, the commodities people tend to forget. Like this, like the commodities right now to build a house, it's just it's it's skyrocket. Like the question is though, we will see. And we it's will. It's coming back we, though. Like that was a small dip for a little while, but it's yeah, coming but back. It's a small dip. It's a very small dip. You know what I mean? Like. If you think about this, the last time this dip happened, it was back in 2003, you know? Mm -hmm. so, but that was like for a while. That was yeah. That was starting in the, the like 1998 down all the way to 2005-ish. Yeah, that's right? true. This one was like a short dip for like a few months. Like it wasn't even like, it's not even for like, that one was for years. This was just a few months. And then now it's back to before. What the question? What the question is though? Like now, would the house? Would will the price drop? Like for example, like once commodity meets back the volume, right? Will those price of commodity will drop, or they know that people can start, there's buyers, so therefore the price will never drop again, right? Like for example, the housing market right now, even though the price is high, there's still people buying it. Mm -hmm. Because my friend, my friend who's trying to buy a cabin in Tennessee, literally lost the bid, even though he overbid by fifty k. More than ten percent he overbid because a foreign investment paid cash and paid more than him. He lost a bid for Kevin, and, and that Kevin was uh, 760 k. Someone overbid it. Um, he bid it a a ten, and then someone bid a fifty, willing to pay almost ninety k more. Nah, he he underbid there. Uh, you ha they have houses. There. <laughs> there's houses here where I I've heard of people who who overbid by. Five hundred thousand dollars and lost yeah. the bid. Five hundred thousand dollars and lost the bid. Like, how crazy is that? But keep this in mind, though, right? So, you, where you are, the concentration on average salary is a lot higher than where you know in Tennessee. Yeah, right? it doesn't matter. I, I, like, but, he still he bid ten percent over. Like, geez, come on, bro. But I get. But again, it, it's it just is different, such, right? Like, we yeah. we we grew up in a market where like you always underbid. Right, like you're, right. you're yeah. like you're always trying to get a good deal, um, and like what what the seller has is is what, what the seller puts the price up is always like his high end, right? Correct. Yeah. Whereas now they put the price up, it's their high end, and they're still getting overbid yeah. on it. So like it's it's definitely a buyer's market right or a seller's market right now. Yeah, I mean the the only person that's winning right now is the real estate agent. So, uh, people who have houses that they want to sell. They're also winning. The That's true. Yeah, the sellers are all winning, right? My now. my my issue, to be honest with you, is the, uh, so before the United States was too worried about not not having enough foreign investment in the United States, right? Now I feel like we're having too much. Should there be any regulation behind that to help that out? Because listen, especially South Do you Florida, you have numbers on like how much of the sales are foreign investment versus domestic. No, I, I don't think there's enough data for that right now. I I know because that I. It's kind of hard to distinguish this much. Keep this in mind. If you go through a land trust, you can't just disclose that. Mm -hmm. So, it's but, more like but, how much is investment versus how much is uh like personal, right? That's, correct. That's probably more a better indicator. But I, I because still, just because it's international, like just just because they're international, doesn't mean that like it's so much. I I feel like just investment companies are probably a big majority of, of the sales. Well, I, my, my, my issue is that you see even United States corporations doing the same exact thing, right? Mm -hmm. You see Zillow doing that thing too. So yeah. should Zillow own houses like that and then drive the prices up and then while an average person cannot afford, you know what I mean? Like, like because you see, because Zillow has a data and they go, oh, they're like, oh, you know what? We should buy this one because we can see the potential going up before an average person does. Yeah, but that's, a, I think that's a different, conversation because but again though it's still investment right local investment versus foreign investment that's the only difference they're fighting against but yeah. it's st you're still fighting against an average person though right 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 yeah and you're but like yeah that's that's but like you're you're identifying should <laughs> should international investment be restricted or like regulated whereas i think it's just a like the full institutional um, well, it's I mean, let's break it down first, right? Foreign investment now. So I, should, I sent you a link. How much foreign investment are coming to the United States this past ten years? Okay, we know that's gone up dramatically. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, especially if you go to that report page, right? 
uh, that has a uh, just just China alone literally leads the number number one number foreign investment in the United States. Okay, All right, in page six, and page then six. yeah, and one of the one of the one of the things is that the six, second is Brazil. Okay, and I see that easily in California and Florida, especially mm-hmm. in LA and Miami, and then what the, the investment is going to manufacturing or housing, whatever it is, just. We know that the the foreign investment has gone to the United States, has bought out. They bought off companies, they bought off land or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. And and, and th- that's that's not, that's the fact that we know that it's gone up. If you go to page four, we know that but the United that, States has. Is this a bad thing? Well, before we we wanted it more because we didn't have enough foreign investment money. But now, I feel like maybe we have it too much. There should have been control. Like for example, China has control of that themselves. They they saw that in the early two, uh, early uh, early two thousands that China was there was a lot of foreign investment going to China. Now they decided to take more control of that now, right? Mm-hmm. Because they didn't want that um, they, they didn't want their people to go go back to regress to you know to be poor because they couldn't afford housing things like that. So like they're a little bit more. So they're buying about. houses in the U.S. so they can send their people here to to live yeah. here. That's what they're doing. They're sending people here to live in their not, their, not necess- old, their the the stuff that they own here. Not not necessarily mean meaning like rich people in China are just buying houses here to make more money. That's all it is. Exactly, but like yeah. rich people everywhere are gonna go buy stuff yeah. everywhere. So uh, so now, but now we're, let's talk about the other side where corporations in the United States alone they're they're doing that too as well, right? So now mm-hmm. you have two giant people, two giant you know such as the corporations that have a lot of cash. When an average person doesn't to buy a house, so now we were going back to you know we, we try to bid for a house. Yeah, we want to overbid. We try to overbid. We still can't win because they want to. Some people are willing to pay cash. Sorry, yeah. some people some corporations willing to pay cash. We're not. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't think it's a international versus U.S. thing or domestic. I thing. I, I really think it is though. See, I think I think at the end of the day, that you have your corporations, United States, that's doing the same thing. Then you have your foreign investment who's doing the same thing. Now it's like that's pretty much two thirds of the pie that's taken away. So, I think I think all businesses are going to do the same thing. So I, I feel like a distinguishing between between like international versus domestic is kind of it's it's oh, to you is irrelevant. So so to you is irrelevant. Then. Yeah, I feel like they're the same. They're 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 all they all have the same goal, right? So yeah, correct. And yeah. they all have cash. So. Sure. Like I feel like they're in the same boat. Like distinguishing between between the two, I think domestic's probably way more than than. In, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't have the numbers for that part. But but however, though, I just feel like it's easier to control domestic, so that you you can restrict to certain certain degree. Let's say that you know if you have a foreign company, you can only buy two houses or something like that. Whatever. I don't know. I'm but how do you that. how do you even how do you even um distinguish that because they could start a, they could create a corporation for their u.s investments and then oh yeah of course they can just feed it. the it's money just, it just it, it just no... makes it it just makes it harder sometimes that's all it is i don't know you go to yeah. delaware you can you can make any corporation you want in delaware yeah so, i get that <laughs> so it's but, not but, like but a... you see you see where i'm going with that right at the end of the day something. I'm, not, I'm not arguing about that what, whatever is easier harder but i'm arguing that we're an average person is getting less opportunity it's going to be way more it's going to be like that going forward as well as we see more millionaires, more more millionaires, people, more, more rich people coming a lot. Like, right I agree. We- I I don't disagree with you there. Yeah. Um, I don't disagree with you there at all. I think I think for sure, like this, like corporations in general are just going to take over that market, and then we're gonna all get priced out. Yeah, and even banks right now, banks are trying to do their best to like slowly release some, like uh, sort of bankruptcy stuff of that. Well, before back in the day, they had they had to release all of them, right? And so mm-hmm. banks can, uh, banks right now are buying houses, renovating them, and then flipping a higher price too. Mm-hmm. And they call they still consider successful closure. Isn't that crazy? Oh, <laughs> well, wow. back well back in the day, foreclosure were a true foreclosure. You know what I mean? Like when the house you buy it as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no renovation; it's just sold there's, as yeah, is. Mm-hmm. yeah. But they they can make way more money on those. That is interesting. That yeah. like the the banks are gonna make they're making they're gonna make so much money off of that. But they've been doing like that since since the last recession. It's a thing like what they could also do is they all of those houses could be they have a TV show like uh, was it Renovation Brothers or whatever, <laughs> and then they'll get money off of the TV show, 
and yeah. then they'll flip the house and then make the money there. I should work for. I need to work for a bank there where like they need to. I got all these ideas that they could. Do. <laughs> How do you triple down on your on your? So uh, so okay, right, so right now the average house in the United States costs like two hundred ninety k, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, in, let's just talk, sorry in Florida right now, two hundred ninety k. What do you think this in Florida Rome in twenty years from now? What the average cost will be in Florida? Yeah, Florida. in twenty right years, I think right it's going to double. Right now it's two hundred ninety k. It's going to double. Yeah, I can I can I can see it. Doubling easily, so I should never sell my house in Florida. That's what he said. Now you sell whatever you want to sell, man. <laughs> There's gonna be ups and downs the whole time, but I think I think for sure, like we've only seen an exponential rise in prices, yeah. right? It, even even like uh 2000, even with like 2008 when everything crashed, like the prices still crashed way le- like. It crashed from like three hundred thousand to two hundred thousand or something, right? So it's still like, there was still like a big, from the nineteen eighties to to then, like it didn't it didn't grow it grew I feel way like, faster as the than the average income. Well, here, so I have I have uh I, I feel like, I I feel like at the end of the day, the California took less of a toll than Florida did. I think Florida took a big toll. I think California pricing took less of a toll. You know what I mean? So, so this chart here shows all the average transaction prices. Oh, sorry, all the transaction prices. I I guess um, I'm just trying to see what this number means. This one it says four five hundred. That means the index. Yeah, this is an index. It's an index. Yeah, correct. This is an index. So even like in Florida alone, like you said, right in 2008, 2009, look at the decline, and then suddenly it just recovered. It it already surpassed. It recovered. And it surpassed after 2016, 17, 30. Yeah, but that's yeah. expected, right? That's true, but man, but right now we already hit past also, our all-time index. High. It's not like it's not like real numbers at all. Comparatively well, it, to what? Well, what are they comparing to? Uh, they're comparing this. Hang on, I'm looking at the Excel sheet. Comparing to the house price index. Uh, uh, they said the estimated sales price versus the appraisal data. Yeah, but if you just go to if you just go to something easier, right? You know, something to like average sale price of houses in general in the U.S., right? Yeah. In two thousand nine, things dropped down to like two hundred and uh, all the way down to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. To two fifty seven, yeah. Correct. And then now it's up to in this chart it says four hundred thousand, right? Yeah, that's crazy though. That increase. Is still way more than a uh, medium household income. Yeah, groups, right. And get this mind. Get this mind. And this is with a lack of inventory. Imagine with no, like you think that now, like what what is the incentives of new developers developing new places now? You know what I mean, like why would they want to do that now? I mean, I guess they could do it because they, but they don't want to flood the market either, though. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Because they know that they could, they're still selling no matter what. All these old houses with this much prices. Why build that many new houses now? Well, the builders, like the the people building new houses, do they also own old houses? It could they could be because they're developers, so it could be. Yeah, I don't know what a developer is. I feel like a developer is someone who creates a new house. Yeah, um, but well, developers is the one that you know pretty much develops the land. You're correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're they're creating new houses, right? But like, again, they still need the bank's money. The bank could own whatever you know. It's it's a, I mean, there's a whole uh, topic we can talk about in that, that episode. But but either way, though, there's there there is shortage of new houses in inventory, and one of the reason why is because of commodity costs, and the other reason why is because right now, like I feel like there's not a lot of developers because there's not that many opportunities for new houses right now, because of just the cost. This it's not as profitable. Yeah. With labor going up as well, so real estate developers buy properties or partner with landowners, then develop yep. a plan to build or rebuild the property. Yep. Okay, yeah, so they do own. Yeah, they it, do it own. makes sense. It makes sense that they would restrict the number of new houses being built yep. and keep keep supply low yeah. until and uh, our population is also increasing, right? Yeah. So should so should there be any? Our, kind of I guess federal- yeah, our our 
our population is decreasing, right? Because the boomers no, are dying. I, I mean, our population has not uh, decreased, but it's still increasing just less. That's all it is. Oh, it's just increasing less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Especially our generation, we're having kids less also, too. Yeah, so wouldn't our, wouldn't our population decrease? Because I guess not, the boomers not, haven't I, died off yet, right? Yeah, I, I, don't think we, I don't think we're to a point where our population is decreasing yet, let's just say. You know? Our population is still increasing, but it's probably the decrease has slowed down. Okay. I mean, sorry, the increase has slowed down. Yeah, yeah so like, it just feels like there's no incentive to like keep, to there like isn't. keep buying, uh, building new houses. So that should now the government step into this because this is a huge issue too, though. What are they going to do? Well, restrict foreign investment like, to a certain degree. And make that, them harder. I, but honestly, that's not the biggest issue here. It, I feel like it's still an issue, but you're right. It may be not the biggest issue. And then corporations, right? How can you restrict a corporation to buy stuff too? Because at the end of the day, there should be, but obviously there's not going to, I mean, there's not going to be incentive for them to do it, the government to do that regardless, because, but an average person eventually, especially in 20 years from now, the cost, it may cost over 600K. And in salary, they make maybe 60K. That makes no sense at all. You know? Yeah. So maybe they give, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like there's no way to stop. Uh, like they, they have to put on more taxes onto corporations who are doing investments. Yeah. I think that's the only way. And for like, they can do like a more strict foreign tax, but then yep. those foreign companies are just going to build US uh, corporations and then pay the same as everyone that. else anyways yeah and work around that. so yeah. you need to you need to tax all corporations or yeah. real estate corporations like if your portfolio is uh, let's say that's made out of more than 10 percent of houses or just like all housing uh investments should be taxed more like yeah everything even so, so, even like like everything just so let's so let's more. so so let's say that if you own more than five houses in your portfolio or whatever i'm like any if you own one like you just tax more yeah, that could work, but it's I like mean, tax it's, more on your capital gains. But if, but the thing is that though that one because now you can't make that the federal law. You have to make that a local level. How? Like why? Because property tax is based on state. I say so, city, a city. Capital state. gains is federal. Yeah, capital gains though, but that's capital gains in terms of like that's assuming that you make profit because you can transfer. There's a law you can transfer how, your profits to another one in 180 days now. So therefore, you you never have to come to capital gains. For your for selling a house, mm -hmm. so you yeah. never have to pay cap capital gains tax when you sell a house. Uh, you have 180 days to transfer if you buy, if you buy another property. Oh, oh, that's like yeah. yeah, that's what you're saying. Like if you yeah. buy another property within the 180 days, then yep. you don't have to pay the capital gains tax. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can get rid of that. Then what's the point of buying houses? The point of buying houses, like, <laughs> honestly, that's not the question, right? Like, uh, the question yeah. is not what's the point of buying houses. <laughs> like, if you want to, if you really want to make it so that housing is not I, owned by all corporations, yeah. then that's what you do. Yeah, I, 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 listen, I get that. But it's, it's also part of it, like, you know, you, wanna, you don't want to hurt a lot of the corporations to a certain degree where there's not, then they're not going to do it at all, right? So... But you still yeah, want to make sure. Right. But like honestly, yeah. what this is is a workaround so that they don't have to pay taxes. Correct. All I'm saying yeah. is pay your taxes. So yeah. we get we make money when you're pay when you're when you're selling a house. Like if you if you do it, we're like, oh, if you never have to pay taxes, what's the point of having the tax? Yeah. So it's never going to affect. It's never yeah. going to affect anyone. And and then, and again, right? We think about this that the price that you're selling at matters too, right? And so, like, think about the like, think about the California law with the housing situation there. You want to explain it? You want to you want to go further on that? <laughs> you just want to just like throw that out no, there and no. then leave it, <laughs> and let it settle, no, no. so everyone's so, thinking like, well, what is so it there's say a law. Next? So so there's a law in Cali there's a law in California where it it uh, if you sell your house, and the only time that it gets appraised. It's when mm -hmm. you sell your house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, like no one sells there because there's so the so the reason why no one sells there because they, the property tax is, is based on what the house was last appraised on. So therefore the, they pay no property tax at all. Mm -hmm. So there's no incentive to people to sell. Mm -hmm. While now in Miami or South Florida, it's different now. Everyone's trying to sell because property tax is being jacked up too high. 
So now that's too extreme now. So like there has to be found a way of a happy medium. I feel like per state, there should be some kind of standardization of some kind of property tax. So that way it's, it's not, it, doesn't, it shouldn't vary that much per state. That's, then, you're, then you're like, that's a federal law you have to put in. But I don't think, it sh- I don't think the state will buy that. Yeah, because we're states' rights, man. Yeah. Like, what mm-hmm. are you going to do? Yeah. I don't think, I think that's, you're yeah. hitting at a different point there. Yeah. yeah. By the way, so like prices in California, houses will never go down as much as, you know, the state because of that law still. Mm-hmm. You know? So, and so therefore, you, you saw it in, in, during COVID time, people fled California, fled New York City, you know, to suburbs. And this is why they all came to Florida and they made the price, price even more houses you know even go to go up even more mm-hmm. yeah so. but that's good for you now your house is worth more yeah it's, but it sucks for people who are trying to buy a house for their own family you know for the first time it sucks if you only have one house so like your price has gone up but then you sell and then you have to buy another house that's more expensive or high priced as well yeah where are you gonna live so yeah. even but take taking buying a house on the side right just buying a house rent has gone up Mm-hmm. Because developers if, have, well, developers have bought, you know, developing new buildings, you have, and then, uh, or whatever it is, right? So there's the competition just to buy new buildings right now is so fierce. So therefore, it, you know, once you buy the building, you want to raise the rent up, right? Because you want to make your ROI back. So rent, if for, it, at the end of the day, the people is going to pay for that rent. It's going to affect them. Yeah, I think that's, I think... The rent prices going up is more a fact that the supply of houses is low. So price of houses have gone up. So people can't afford to buy a house. So they go rent. Well, uh, there's, more supply. Supply, there's more supply of renters. So then prices go up. Well, house of supply has definitely, you know, uh, gone, has, gone, has come down for sure. Um, it's because of inventory, but it's just this past year or so. But again, my concern is that like, would there ever be a time where the developers will be, you know, I guess incentivized, incentivized to, to build, more, build more houses. Yeah. There needs to be, um, there's probably got to be some sort of like uh, federal aid on that. Well, and listen, I think that's probably been done in the past where they've, the government's given uh, incentives to build houses. That's true. To the developers. I mean, I mean, if you look at this chart here, right, the monthly supply of houses has definitely gone up and down depending on the decade, right? It's gone up and down, up and down, you know. And actually during the 90s is the time that stood kind of low where we are today. And so, and but then again, you, then you go this long period of drought and then it spiked up again. So like, it's cyclical. We, we understand that, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you think like maybe after all this COVID stuff, it's going to spike like it did in like 2005? I think it's probably another 10 more years. Not right away. Probably 10 more years. I'll say probably in, 20, in 2030, maybe. 2030 to 2050. I mean, it's been low since 2012, right? So yeah. we, we've been in this this low period since 2012. The other one, like the last time it happened was 97 to 2005. So that was, uh, was 18 years or eight yeah. years, eight years. This one is 2012. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's right around that time. It's and right I mean, around that time. I mean, but does mean that the house price will go down? Maybe, maybe not. Or it's the or plateau. Right it, now, might, the mortgage... it might not even be that housing prices go down. It might be that people just are buying. Yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah, like, if people are buying, then, and the, the supply is low, then they just start building more. What do you think will happen if there's a recession next year? How do you think this will affect the housing prices? Housing prices? It is a recession. Yeah. I don't. I. I feel like it would just go up still, because there will still be buying. Uh, investors will still be buying. A re- oh, so- recession happens. Like I feel like people are hoarding money right now to buy. You think like, so? Yeah. Even even like with everything, they're not spending all of their money. They're still gonna buy more. Hmm. Like if it goes down, they'll still have they'll they still have cash to buy more. And and the people who are buying now, they have the credit with the with the banks to buy more. Uh, I can see that though. Yeah. 
it's it, it is a recession recessions only hurt the people who are looking who are uh middle low uh lower middle middle class right the yeah. upper class still is i guess they're, they're wealthy enough they're still rich right <laughs> they still have money so then and then them them like uh losing their percent like the percentage that they've lost is lower than what someone who is in the lower income uh is losing through a recession oh that's you know so like if you lose yeah. your job or like if if like say you lost your job now you have to take a lower paying job right you, that's true it's gonna be like oh it's a 40 percent pay pay decrease that you have to take that's true yeah whereas Actually, like 40 percent to like someone who's making a million dollars is still six hundred thousand. No, I, I I can definitely see that. Oh, yeah. check check this check this stat out. Talk, speaking of foreign investment, so this stat here, the last ten years, of how much uh other properties is you know. You're really against this foreign investors. You really hate the foreign investors. No, I love foreign investment, but to a certain degree, though, right? Oh, I can't I, I can't see this. I'm not a premium member. Oh, uh, my apologies. Uh, You're a premium anyway. member to Statista. <laughs> no, I just have a I just have a way to see that. <laughs> How the hell? All right. So anyway, here, here's the, according to, uh, to this stats here, it says that there is over what? $5.4 billion. Yeah. $54 billion property sold, you know, and then 6% over the two giant states or to China, 6% of that. That's huge. 6% of the 54 billion. Yeah. That's huge. What's total? What's the total housing of? What's the total U.S. properties sold? Uh, the total. Let me see. Like, what percentage is is foreign investing? Is foreign investment to the entire population? It doesn't say that here. It's a chart. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I don't have access to it, so I won't let me do it. Oh, it you have the wrong access. You pay. You, you have some <laughs> access, but not all. No, uh, it, apparently because it's cookies, I I can only see one thing at a time, mm -hmm. so it won't let me see it. But is it still interesting? It's a huge number, though. That's crazy. Fifty-four like, billion. That's pretty big. But I feel like that the it's the percentage is still relatively low. Relatively low. Let's see. What is it? What is it? U.S. property sold. In general, right? Yeah. Value of U.S. properties sold. Let's see. Let's see what comes up on Google. Uh, so, two. I don't know. This says this says. Uh, U.S. housing. Gained two point five trillion dollars in value in two thousand twenty, but that's not like how much has been sold. Um, I don't know what that means. That it's gained two point five trillion. The whole the whole housing market is thirty six trillion, but that's not how much is sold last year. No, you have, you have to look at some kind of data for that. It's mm -hmm. kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's something that's probably more uh, that you have to do more digging than just like a, a Google quick Google search. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I did a day. I think we both agree, right? The housing prices will probably at least easily double by the time you know in twenty years from now. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think we'll keep up this with the salary. Um, just definitely won't keep up with salary. And yeah. I feel like yeah, and I feel like if you're middle class, like it's, it's gonna get tougher and tougher to buy a house. Yeah, you're getting you screwed. Got, you have to go farther and farther out away from the city. You have to drive two hours is, to get to the city. This is why probably maybe, you know, we should buy land right now, Robert. Let's buy land, whole land. Where? Where are we buying land at? 20 miles outside of every single suburb. Just buy land. Every suburb? <laughs> how many, how many, uh, how many big cities are you looking at right now? I'm looking at Miami. I'm looking at uh, Miami. I'm doesn't at, have too far outside of. I, I'm looking at Orlando. I'm, look, <laughs> like I'm looking the, at Orlando. Outside of the suburbs is ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at Tampa. I'm looking at Tampa, Orlando. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Dallas. I'm looking at uh, like the size of city you're looking at, where you're looking at like Orlando. Uh, that's a that's 
a smallish city. There's a lot of cities that are that size and lower. So if you're looking for yeah. all of those, that's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of a lot of cities that you're gonna be. Just buy land. Just hoard, just hoard land. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to buy houses. Just hold land. Just hoard. I mean, yeah, land. But, I mean, first of all, it's less property tax, and then it, 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 if developers want to buy from you, they can just you know they can flip it. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> just buy all the land. We should just buy yeah. all of like Oklahoma or something. I, I do really wish though I I should have taken a student loan out during 2009 during recession time when like, the student was cheap. I got 200k loan out and bought five properties at that time. Did you think about that? I thought about it, but I didn't execute on it. So at that time, I only have I was interning at Disney, and had income already, so I qualified for a mortgage. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I pre-qualified for only 110k at that time. Mm-hmm. And ha- however, though, I should have taken a student loan now to, to say I have 100k on top of that. I would, have, you know, maybe have bought two properties. And I was in Orlando at that time. I saw it. Ha- I remember seeing a house near I Drive next to Universal for 57,000 no, uh, 87 thousand dollars. A three two nice two three two, mm-hmm. you know, like maybe five years old, whatever it was. I mean, and, uh, the time to buy is always right now, no matter what. Even even like, a year, if you're buying for long term, like you might as well just buy. Yeah, it just makes sense to buy if you're if you're not looking to like flip a house. Yeah. Even <laughs> even like uh even like, like like I said like we said like even the two thousand nine everything dropped and it's all back now right yeah. it's back and higher so yeah. uh long-term investments in real estate is just always a good idea yeah i mean even if recession hits today i don't see uh if you within maybe five ten you know uh miles away from the central city for big city with high population density i don't see the pricing drop that much anymore i feel like right now commercial properties may be a steal right now because of what happened before. that's true i think i think commercial is is where like all like the good prices are right now. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you, if you can buy commercials right now and you know how to get, if you know how to get good deals with them, and do that. I mean, obviously, an average person is not gonna have a million dollars to just to buy oh. a commercial property. <laughs> no, you should buy some of these like big ass buildings here in the city. Yeah, okay. Because they're <laughs> empty, right? So if you have like what is it like ten billion dollars. You know, sitting out there. <laughs> you know, get some investors, ten billion dollars, and then you just buy up one of these buildings. Yeah. Eventually, like that's gonna come back, and then you're gonna be banking. That's okay. Well, we, we, <laughs> hey, we we can fill up. Hey, all right, we, you and I can start our land trust, and then raise money. You know, and then just buy a bunch of buildings. <laughs> that's true. That's a, all right. <laughs> Hey, 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 and on top of that, if, if you if you know anybody who have crypto, you can leverage them now against loans. So. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Collateral, right. right? Uh, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to get into this with you, Mike. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. want to get into that business. With all right. You. So, all right. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're gonna wrap up this episode with our extra funny MSG session. Robert, what do you have for us today? Oh, I have this. Let me show you this. Um, this is this was so crazy <laughs> when I saw it, uh, because I love pizza rolls. Yeah. But uh, this is taking it to a different level. Um, is there an extreme? Is there an extreme though? This seems extreme, right? So this says efficient food heating. They put their pizza rolls in the dryer. It says, bro, put 300 pizza rolls in the dryer and give it 10 minutes. This seems <laughs> extreme. Like, I don't know if this is if this should be a thing or not. Because, yeah, it's going to heat up your pizza rolls. And... It's also gonna turn them, right? So they won't. <laughs> so, it won't burn them. It won't burn. It won't them. burn on every one side. But <laughs> man, this seems wrong. I wonder, does it work though? <laughs> I'm really curious. Three hundred. Hang on, hang on. Three hundred rolls. That means he bought the whole Costco box. That's what it is. The whole box of Costco. Yeah, and it barely does anything. It's barely even like. Uh, <laughs> it's barely wait, over it's, the rim. Of this wait, wait, wait. So wait, dryer. is this is this picture done or not done? I have no idea. It looks like some of them are done. It doesn't look like it at all. I don't think it's, I don't think it's started yet. I don't know. Some of them look like they could be a little uh, burnt, but yeah, it wouldn't be burnt in the in the oven or in the yeah in the in dryer the, in the dryer. That's hilarious. Poor dryer though. Man, that is Ima- nuts. Imagine you to clean it out. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this just seems like a bad idea. 
But since uh, since no, like no, no, I no, love hey, pizza hey, rolls, hey, I gotta hey, I had to pick this up. Hey, check 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 this out. One of the comments says the evolution of air fryer, the air dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Air dryer. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, and then considering that the pizza roll normally cooks in a 400 degree Fahrenheit, dryers does not get that hot even enough uh, to boil the water. So therefore, I'm not going to say no, at least for 10 minutes at least. If you let them long enough, it gets hot, then it gets too mushy. That's true. He's right on that because they're, they're frozen. Wow, this guy really went into depth of like, he has a, 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 a lot of knowledge, random knowledge on the heating, of, the heating inside of a dryer. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny though yeah um our, our mind is not that funny but mine is kind of quirky you can say so uh let me send you my link so pretty much um it is a picture of a small prinkle box and the title says, I had to buy two of these just to make the chip duck face thing. So this is a box of a Pringle that says just one chip. Whoa, 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 wait. <laughs> so this thing, this little this box of Pringles is one chip? Is it just one? You see the title says just Pringle and it says one. one. Oh my God, no <laughs> freaking way. How, do, and this, this, <laughs> this Pringle box is just one Pringle. In there, that's <laughs> this oh isn't my god, real, is it? This is fake, probably, probably it's not real. I don't know, but but it, it, the comment says, I refuse to believe this, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking the same exact this cannot be real. One Pringle, one, one of the comments says, Imagine this place is the same place that sells one Skittle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there's a one, um, uh, have you watched Bo Burnham like a, a lot of his, his, yeah, his stuff. Yeah. He had one song where he was uh trying to copy what Kanye West does and he just like uh talks this <laughs> stuff and like and the and he's like I have some beef or no it might not have been that song. There's another one. Oh yeah, it was that song where he's like uh my biggest beef is that I can't fit my hand inside of a Pringle can. My hands yeah. are too big and yeah. this solves that. Because there's yeah. only one. So he only has to get his finger <laughs> in to pull out one. <laughs> yeah. Once you pop the fun stops. <laughs> Once you pop the fun, the fun stops forever. <laughs> like that's it. Just one. Man. Uh, if you actually make these, this will be a hundred percent call them Pringle singles. <laughs> Pringle singles. <laughs> Wait, are you reading comments or is yes, this I'm like... reading comments? This is such a comment. I was like, so man, hilarious. that is that is a that is clever. Like I would it's never like, have come it's, ever. A, it's a good slogan there. Pringle singles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah the comments uh, are always the best on these but yeah. this is amazing like i had the same exact comments like this is not true this cannot be real just it's probably one. not re it's probably not real it's probably like an edit somebody added that just one in there yeah probably man this is it's <laughs> just I mean? so funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but anyway all right so we're gonna end this episode with our free range event what do you have for us today robert free ranging event uh i have a event about my uh ipad uh uh, do you don't like your Apple iPad? stuff? No, I, my iPad's great. It's just a, it's a a gripe on Apple because my iPad has now come up and said, "Oh, you can't back, you can't back up your iPad anymore. It's just taking what? up too much space, and they want you to buy storage or something. I don't know. Okay, but well, it I mean, gives, iCloud, the iCloud storage. Thing. Yeah, iCloud is, iCloud cool. is full. Cool. I have nothing on my iPad. <laughs> like all I have are apps on there. Okay. So like why is it like how could it possibly be that I filled up the iCloud? Now first of first of all, go to your iPad right now and go to the storage. How much space you take in the whole thing? On my iPad? Yeah. Go to general and go to the about and see how much I and go to the storage. I don't save space? anything on this thing. No, I'm just curious though, because sometimes you can, I can accidentally save some that can like download stuff into this thing. Where do you go into general? So you go to settings. I think you go to general. Uh, iPad storage. Yeah. How much is it full? No, fifty-two gigs. Out of out of what? Out of one twenty-eight. So you do halfway. So that and means most of that most of that is apps. 
Most okay. of that is apps. So, so because but iCloud by default, you only you only get what? How many gigs free? How many? I don't give a shit, right? Honestly, I don't care. Like, cause you're not you don't need to save all of these apps. Most you look at this, majority of it is apps. Yeah. Like probably 80 percent of it is apps. You just have to you just have to save what apps that I'm using, right? That's the backup. I don't, well, there's also data behind it too, though. Like for no. example, no, 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 hear me out. So for example, like the WhatsApp data that you have probably downloaded there, it could be also like, for example, like my WhatsApp data right now here, this whole app is 14 gigabytes because I have so much other I don't have there. WhatsApp on here. Honestly, I'm, listening, I mean, no, I'm, I'm just letting you know, right? But like, like yeah. honestly, I don't give a shit, all right? Just all you have to do is back up what apps I'm using and the apps will fill in themselves. Depends on like if you have downloaded data, it may not. I don't know. I feel yeah. like I sh if I don't have anything saved on my iPad, yeah. it shouldn't fill up my storage to the point where they have to say, "Oh, hey, you know what? You need to buy more." This is just Apple being being assholes. You can I, save I metadata. You don't have to save every fucking thing that's in there. Well, it depends how what depends what your settings back up is. You can you can change the settings. I've saved. I've changed nothing about it. Right. Well, I'm saying you should. I mean, therefore, you can just save save the app. That's it. Why should that be that? Why is that not the default? No, the default says save everything because you want when you're true backup, you want true backup. That's the default. I feel like I feel like Apple feel like just does it like this. I feel like it's using error. <laughs> no, no, no. This is just Apple being assholes, and then every fucking few every fucking day or so it comes up an icon that says oh you need to buy app i store icloud storage yeah. because you're out of storage i have nothing on here like there's no reason for me to have to have backup for it see if you could change your setting just to back up the Apple. i don't give a shit it shouldn't be like this it shouldn't like apple is just I, being I, fucking again, douchebags I, I feel like making I, you pay for stores that you don't need I, that, that's how I feel with Google Cloud. That's just why I don't back up into Google Cloud either. Google Cloud gives you more stores than this shit. I don't, uh, 10 gigabytes. It has so to. Much. No, 10 it has gigabytes. to. No, no, like, 10, this is such no, no, it doesn't. No, actually, that's not true. Also, Google, what are you saving on Google? What? Like Google Cloud is actually a storage thing. This is just yeah. this is just saving the apps on your iPad. Like, well, fuck no, that shit. No, no, no. I, no, I, I fucking I, like get, Apple is such bullshit, right? And you're no, gonna be an app. You're Apple stands. So you're gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna, an Apple stamp guy pull, because you're gonna pull all the I, stops out to argue everything you can. I'm not arguing. I feel like this is a user error. First of all, Second it's not all, user error. I've done nothing to this. Yeah. Why is it defaulting to me being like uh, to for me having to to buy I iCloud storage? Why? Why is it? Why is it default to that? Why is it default that I have to buy iPads? I iCloud. Storage? I mean, first of all. Two, two gigabytes exist excessive. Something is something else is saving you that besides the app. So sure you know. I don't know what it is. Are you using Camo in that? What? Are what are you, you using... talking about? What did you just say? Oh, what did you just out. say? What did you just say? What else are you saving in there besides the apps? I've saved nothing on this shit. Are you using Camo in there? Saving all the work? No. Um, with the two gigabytes. I saved apps. nothing on there. Photos? No, there's no photos. I don't connect to anything. Messages? No, I don't have any messages on it. Email? I don't use it. I download use it. Emails? I use it to watch YouTube and Netflix. Like that's all I use it for. Do you download? Do you download YouTube videos or Netflix videos? No, I don't download anything. I don't know. It's two gigabytes a lot though. So yeah. I don't give a shit. Like they shouldn't. Like it shouldn't be saving all this shit and just being like, oh hey, like I, I there's mean, not that much to save. I I mean, regardless though, by default, no matter whether it's Apple product or Google product, by default, both system saves backup the way it is saves all they do not google does not do that i have had google products forever and they've never asked me to buy more storage because of a regular that, use I, that that for me doesn't have been a different experience because i do a backup update to my laptop before i, I was doing it to, to your my, laptop to, that's a different backup to a google drive though right yeah that's and a so, different that's a different backup though that's that's I mean, your computer you're backing up your computer to it which is if, 40, I, if I have like a 45 phone, gigabytes though. if i have a phone if i have a phone yeah if i have a phone i can back up my phone to google without having to buy storage how much space does google give you it, no, no more than 10 gigabytes no more than 10 gigabytes but free. like saving what's on your phone shouldn't take that much it does but saving me, example i have 126 gigabytes that i'm paying an apple storage for 199 month 199 month now because of that 
because because they force you to buy storage because you're like it's all this shit. I'm telling you, it's, yeah. it shouldn't be like that. No, because because my videos and my photos that alone. Yeah, that should already... be, that that's on you. Yeah, I don't have photos. I don't have videos. I don't. But it's a honestly, like, something. yeah. Honestly, it's just it's just bullshit. Like be, I, yeah. Apple is just bullshit. I have all <laughs> this shit on my phone for yeah. years, and I don't I don't have to ha- I don't have to buy Google storage. You don't pay for the Google Photos. No. How much space do you have in there? I mean, for free. No, but Google, like, when you buy a Pixel, you get unlimited. Uh, oh, you get unlimited. That's different, though. See, that's for, different. For photos and videos, that's different, though. Like, that's like if I had so, photos and videos on here, yeah, I would say, but, okay, I have to buy no, storage. No, no, no. So, okay, so I, 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 I can see where your frustration comes in. Apple doesn't give you that unlimited storage for photos and stuff. They don't give shit. No. Yeah, they just want to you... gouge their, their, their yeah, people. Yeah, that's true. I'll give you that. That's all they, they do. So, so like, if, if I would... I, I would love to Apple to give us free storage just for photos and videos, to be honest with you. Just like the Google does. No, but they can't. Yeah. They can't. They because, have too many Because users. at the end of the day, the reason, why, the, reason, the reason why I pay for it is because of photos and videos. Not because I have stuff in there, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's just bullshit. <laughs> I don't understand why I need, right. I need so, to, I need to right, so, buy I mean, storage a, for I mean, nothing. I get it. That, I get it. I get it. For apps? Piece, like, why do I need yeah. to buy storage for apps? That's fine. There's yeah. nothing. All right, so moving on to, you know, my event is not as frustrating as yours. My event is more about gas price. I'm in Florida right now. I'm almost, gas price over 350 mm-hmm. for, for, for medium class right now in Orlando. The lowest gas price is 312 right now. You, you it's buy, crazy. You buy medium gas? You don't uh, buy the, premium? Uh, no, I don't buy premium at all. Premium is 370 right now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I never buy premium because I don't have a luxury car. There's it's, no point. It's good for your car in general, though. I have a Camry. Doesn't matter. If you if you give a shit gas, it's okay. It's still fine. <laughs> it still is better for the engine in general. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not though. I'm just saying like at the end of the day, like it's just I buy either medium or low depends. But gas price has gone up dramatically. Why? Why is, there's no? Why is there such a random shortage of gas out of nowhere? It makes no sense at all. Gas like, has always been going up since forever. But still, like, sh- this is what annoys me. It's not summer, first of all. Okay, I get it when it's summer. There's always peak season for gas. You know, right now, literally, I don't, uh, there was there was a, there was a uh, I guess OPEC announced a uh, a swap a, a, a supply cut, so therefore it's driving the gas price up. And then the United States is not drilling as much, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like freaking Biden, man. Yeah, this is not drilling enough. This is why, like, you go on <laughs> Facebook and like. I went on like you went on Facebook. Biden got elected, and they're like, "Remember this: price of gas was eighty nine cents, and all this stuff." And I'm like, "Where are you finding gas for eighty nine cents? Even when it was, even when it was Trump, it was at least a dollar something, dollar fifty, dollar two dollars." No, no, Trump was it was two eighteen, two nineteen. I guess because during COVID year, especially the last two years. I think COVID I just haven't, now. I haven't driven. You haven't driven like, I don't drove. Yeah. I don't drive a lot. Gas yeah. over here is expensive, but like I even when I was driving in Florida. It was it was around it was around two dollars. I, I remember first year Trump gas price would hit two ninety still, and it went down because what ended up happening is that they were drilling more. Yeah, like that. you know what I'm saying? that's so, why. This yeah. is what happens when you vote for a Democrat. You guys, <laughs> Grr. the gas prices just go up. You know. Wait, didn't you vote Democrat? <laughs> I didn't say well, who I voted for. <laughs> I could I could have voted for anyone. But anyway, but I voted anyway, I voted so, third party actually. So yeah, none but of anyway, this is my fault. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> all right should have anyway, voted for yang and, guys yang gang yeah, but but seriously but I, I was just so surprised though like in the last two weeks i was like what the heck it literally jumped 45 cents in the last two weeks yeah two that's weeks. crazy that is a yeah. lot that's a huge jump man that's, it was 270 it was 275 before that's a lot yeah no, not in the last two weeks no literally the last two weeks two and a half weeks 275 to four dollars and eight no two no two three uh three twenty 320. Oh. Yeah. What do you, that's a 45 cents. I thought you job. said it was I thought you said it was close to four dollars. The well the premium is 379, the premium. Oh 379. Yeah. I've 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 only put in premium for like a long time. As a not not all of us have Ferraris, okay. So, yeah. No no but I, no, 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 no that's not that's not it. Even when I was in Florida and I was driving yeah. like a Honda Civic, yeah, I put in premium. That's nice. Because my, my uncle is a mechanic and he's just like, yeah, yeah. put premium in everything. 
So what I do is I put I put the special oil with the car with the with the gas because you have you can, you can also add an oil to it to yeah it, to the engine yeah well you're right though the premium oil does for some reason it burns a little bit longer you can feel it too yeah and it's better yeah. for it's just I my uncle just says it's better for the engine so the engine will yeah. last longer it'll last it'll just yeah. it'll just protect the engine for longer I don't know it may be too late for my camera he said, it has 130 thousand miles now it'd be too late for it no no after and then he said if he said if you're over a hundred thousand, you just should put premium in general. Like, oh, okay. like before a hundred. Like I, I never had a car. That's, <laughs> I never had a car that's under a hundred, right? Yeah. So like after a hundred, he was like, yeah, just put in premium because it's better for like an older engine. Okay, all right, I'm gonna so, do that. I'm, I'm gonna send you uncle then. All right, I just, <laughs> I just wasted you fifty more cents on gas. Shit, sorry, per man. Gallon. Sorry. Per gallon, per, per gallon. gallon. Sorry, bro. Oh my god, that sucks. <laughs> Blame my yeah. uncle. <laughs> right. All right. Anyway, so we're going to wrap, end up wrapping this episode up. Um, so for those who are listening to us in you know, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, let us know. Let us come in. You know, let us know what you think with the housing market. If you're an expert in the housing market, want to come on, talk to, this, talk to us, give us more data. Listen, we're not experts at all. We're just pulling that, this out as we, you know, we talk and as we try to put a, prove a point. We know that we both agree on that you know, price is going to go up. I mean, hopefully it doesn't go up forever. You know, but if you have more insight, actually, about I it, think it is gonna go up forever. Like, if you look at the chart over time. <laughs> that's true. Over time. It's gone <laughs> over. It's gone up forever. That's true. Yeah. You just hope anyway. that we have a there's a there's a chance for us to buy. That's all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. By the way, if you think there's a housing bubble coming on, let us know. You know, leave a comment. Yeah. Advise us. Let it. Yeah. Let us know when you think the next bubble is gonna happen, and then we can yeah. save up so we can buy. Uh, that's, buy exactly. That's what, that's what it's, we're looking for. Yeah. So if you're watching us on YouTube, leave a comment. Please hit the subscribe button below and hit the like button right there. And just let us know in terms of if you want, uh, in terms of what you think about the market in general. Can you afford a house yourself right now? Can you, can you, you think you can afford a house in 20 years? Yeah. So. And if you want to watch any of our other episodes, you go to our website at www.gfothoughts.com. Yeah. Until next time, take it easy, guys. All Peace. right, y'all. Peace. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Gluten-Free Organic Thoughts Podcast. If you are watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this episode, and leave us a comment. And as always, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GFOT Thoughts. Until next time, see you then.